This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. I'm Angel Jacob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. I was diagnosed with endometrioid carcinoma early this year. I was diagnosed with breast cancer stage 2 at the age of 48. I was diagnosed when I was 11 with ovarian cancer. I was 50 when I was first diagnosed with breast cancer stage 3C. And I'm fighting for it. And I'm still fighting for it. And I survived it. I survived cancer. Cancer is the most life-threatening disease all over the world. According to the Philippine Cancer Society, eight Filipinos die of cancer every hour, 200 deaths each day, or a total of 70,000 lives are lost to cancer every year. In women, there are 6,000 cases of cervical cancer diagnosed each year. In 2010, there were 2,165 new cases of ovarian cancer and 1,760 cases recorded for uterine cancer. According to studies, breast cancer is the leading cancer that hits women in the Philippines. In Asia, the Philippines has the highest number of reported cases of breast cancer. With the prevalence of breast cancer in the country, the Philippine Breast Cancer Foundation was born. We make sure na meron silang makukuhang sponsors for their chemotherapies. We go to communities, we partner with other organizations to increase awareness on breast cancer and breast health. Tonight, we will talk about breast cancer and other cancers that affect women. Can cancer in women be prevented? How important is early detection in these cases? And are there medical breakthroughs to combat these kinds of cancer? All these and more on MedTalk. We're still celebrating Women's Month here on MedTalk. Last week, we discussed an integral factor in a woman's body, the menstrual cycle. Tonight, we will talk about cancers that target women. Joining us is Dr. Jay Famador, a gynecologic oncologist from the St. Luke's Medical Center, Makati Medical Center, and the UERM Medical Center. Also joining us is Dr. Therese Narcisa Fajardo, medical oncologist from the St. Luke's Medical Center and the Makati Doctors' Hospital. You can participate in the discussion by calling our hotline. You can also follow us on Twitter, post on our Facebook page, or send us an email. Good evening, doctors. Welcome to the show. Good evening. Good evening. As mentioned, it's still Women's Month, and we can't let this month go by without talking about the cancers that affect women. But before that, We'd like to understand what is cancer and how does this develop? Therese? Yes. Uh. Um, good evening, everyone. I'd like to correct. I'm from St. Luke's Medical Center and Manila <laughs> Doctors <laughs> Hospital for all those colleagues that are watching now. So cancer briefly is a malignant tumor. Oh, what is a tumor? It's a uh, abnormal and functionless tissue. So what makes it malignant? Malignant means it's not benign, so malignant means that it has the ability to invade other tissues or spread outside the confines of its original tissue. To add to that, no, um, basically the whole system, there's a, there's a regulatory system uh, which is there with us. Our body is composed of cells which continually divide, produce, and we shed off old cells, we create new cells. And when there's a breakdown in that regulatory system, for example, we start producing and keep producing new cells and these cells don't die off naturally, that's when you start to develop a tumor, something that just constantly grows, 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 and tends to spread. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call cancer, basically. So, and there are various reasons to why this happens. No? It can be started off by a viral infection, 
Sometimes it's hereditary, it's genetic, something passed on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just exposure to different things, food, chemicals. Wow. Yeah. So many different factors and so many things to consider. Now let's go into um, the main topic of, of tonight's episode. We're talking about the different types of cancers in women. Let's first talk about breast cancer. Yeah. So um, what, is, uh, what happens to a woman's body when it, she is detected with breast cancer? Well, it usually presents with uh, this abnormal uh, lump in the breast or abnormal uh, changes, skin changes or nipple changes. And um, this cancer in the breast that is detected has, depending on the stage that it is diagnosed, mm -hmm. it has the ability to spread to other tissues. So that's what happens. Um, to the woman. It has the ability to spread outside the breast, to the lungs, mm -hmm. liver, um, bone, and brain. But if detected early, um, it is not really that uh, scary, as we yes. say, you know, just the term cancer. It can be cured. Mm -hmm. so. And you mentioned early detection is key. That's so right. how, how do we um, examine our breasts? Properly, how do we um, detect if there's something wrong or there's something amiss with our system for that day? Well, good you asked that question because starting at the age of uh, 20, um, it is recommended that um, a woman is uh, taught how to do a self-breast examination. Mm -hmm. Every month, you do it uh, one week after the first day of menses. Um, because it's less painful, it's easier to examine your breasts at that uh, part, part of the menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. And then there are, um, you know, several steps in doing the breast exam. Um, I don't know if you want me to go over it. Yes, or? sure, yes, please. Okay. So, um, when you see your doctor, the doctor can easily explain to you how to do it. But first, um, you stand naked in front of the mirror mm -hmm. and then observe your breast, the symmetry, if there's a nipple discharge, skin discoloration. Um, you you um, examine it with your arms above your head and then um, also doing this um, on your hips, mm -hmm. you know, holding your hips to, to see if there, a mass uh, pops out from the breast actually, that um, it th tightens the muscles. Mm -hmm. Then usually you do it while lying down with a, one of your arm uh, underneath yes. your head and with a pillow underneath, mm -hmm. okay? And then so you palpate your right breast with your uh, left hand and palpate your left breast with your yeah. right hand. Doc, so. we have a, um, a video of that a little later on so that okay. our viewers that's can good. understand it a lot better. But thank you very yes, much yes, for explaining better. it. That, that's, that's like better. a teaser into the video <laughs> okay, later on. Yes. So we talked a little bit about breast cancer. We'll go back to that later. How about ovarian cancer? How does this develop in a woman's body? And what particular, is there a particular area for, mm -hmm. the, ovarian, for the cancer to develop? As to how it develops, no. At this level of our understanding, science, medical, uh, we still don't know really what causes ovarian cancer. Most of it is really spontaneous. There's a small minority, of, a small percent, which is really genetic, no? but it's really small. Most of it is spontaneous. The difficult thing about ovarian cancer, it's the most difficult to, to detect early. Sometimes it, it's really because it's inside. Eh? Yes. Sometimes a patient will start feeling heaviness or pain, and usually when they have symptoms, it's already late because it's a mass already growing. Eh? The, 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 the strategy is really to detect it while it's really early. Mm -hmm. But for ovarian, for, for, uh, for some reason, we haven't yet developed the tests that can really detect it early. Most often, when we, when we diagnose an ovarian cancer early, it's parang chamba lang. No? A patient gets operated on for something else, for a myoma, something benign, and then, mm -hmm. whoa, they see an ovarian cyst, they have it biopsied, it turns out to be cancer. Mm -hmm. But most often than not, we tend to diagnose ovarian cancer a little bit late. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that if there's pain, uh, mm -hmm. one should visit their uh, Yeah, once they feel some, something enlarging, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they think na, you know, I'm just getting fat. Yes, know. or maybe I'm bloated, yeah, maybe bloated. natamaan lang yeah. or something. But, so that's, but, that's why it's very important for women to, to have that regular checkup, you know, mm -hmm. at least once a year with, with, their, with their gynecologist. That's the benefit of that. Okay. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned regular. We have regular uh, visitors on our Facebook page. And okay. one of them is Mary Joyce de Guzman. She asks, doctors, does obesity or obesity increase the risk for uterine cancer? Yes. Uh, uterine that? cancer, basically most uterine cancers, more specifically endometrial cancer, is caused by high levels of estrogen. Estrogen is primarily in a woman produced by her ovaries. Yes. But another source of estrogen is adipose tissue. So you have excess fat, you're obese, you definitely will have excess estrogen in your body. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice most obese women will have irregular menstruations because the hormones are imbalanced. Mm -hmm. And the prolonged exposure to estrogen can put you at risk of developing endometrial or uterine cancer. Wow, so they must watch their health. Talaga, yes, no? that's what we always stress no yes yeah mm -hmm. thank you for that doctor a twitter question from carla enriquez i had breast enhancement would i be more prone to breast cancer dr fardo yes that's a very interesting uh, question there have been uh controversial studies that associated breast enhancement or implant silicone or saline to another type of cancer uh, in the u.s it was uh, lymphoma actually a rare uh, cancer of the breast. But after further studies, uh, they haven't really found an association between this uh, saline silicone implants and uh, breast augmentation to breast cancer. So it's not uh, directly, the, the direct association is not strong. There is no strong evidence for that. Mm -hmm. I have to say though that if you do have an implant, it makes it harder to detect uh, the early lesions, mm -hmm. um, that is the um, you know, important case to be made, uh, but not to change um, people uh, from doing you know, breast augmentation yes. for that reason, but you just have to be aware of that and maybe you need um, more um, sophisticated tests to detect it. Like instead of a mammogram and ultrasound, you will need a breast MRI to accurately detect lesions if you have breast mm -hmm. um, augmentation. So, so that, that would be the only case there. Yeah. Is it done more often than those who uh, did not have any breast implants? The breast MRI? Yes. The breast MRI um, is done um, for that, but there's a, you know, a limiting factor. The cost is higher. It's also done for those with dense breasts um, who have family history, strong family history of breast cancers. Mm -hmm. um, so you would like to detect them earlier. It's more um, accurate. Yes, so uh, we do it for those two reasons, those with high risk and um, those who have breast augmentation. Breast augmentation. Well, yes. Thank you very much for that, doctors. Uh, another question from our Twitter account. Dani Rivera asks, can cancer be sexually transmitted? Dr. Dr. J. Yes, uh, specifically cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. Cervical cancer is really acquired through sexual intercourse. Cervical cancer is caused by a virus. It's called the human papilloma virus. It's the same virus that typically calls, ca causes warts. So it's transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact. The cervix is an organ in, in the vagina, which is also composed of sk skin tissue. And the only way for the virus to get in touch with that cervix is through sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. and that's primarily the reason why it, it can be transmitted. Can be no? Spread, no? Yeah. So to, in answer to that question, yes. yes. For cervical cancer, you have to be very specific. Mm -hmm. Not all cancers. So how do we avoid uh, getting uh, cervical yeah. cancer? Well, of course, sexual intercourse is a natural activity. Just like going out where there are public places where you can also be exposed to people with colds, colds and cough, and, cough, and you yes. get it, no? Yes. The same way, a woman will definitely be exposed to this virus. The best way to really to, to, to prevent cervical cancer is to have a regular pap smear. How often should one um, get it? It used to be recommended to have it once a year. But recently, uh, studies have shown that having it every three years is as good as having it every year. The important thing is the regularity, having it every year. Okay. It's a, like a one-time, big-time test. No? You mm -hmm. have to have it regularly. The reason the pap smear is very effective in preventing, no, preventing cancer is its ability to detect a pre-malignant lesion. It can detect changes before they become cancer, and it allows us to intervene early. Mm -hmm. So we can reverse the process before it even develops in the ca to cancer. We can already reverse the process. Mm -hmm. 
again, early detection really is key. No? We'll be talking more about the different cancers that affect women when MedTalk returns. According to the World Cancer Research Fund, broccoli, berries, and garlic are food with the strongest link to cancer prevention. These are low in calories, has lots of phytochemicals, and antioxidants. We're back here on MedTalk and still discussing cancers that affect women. We have a question uh, on our Facebook page, doctors, from Marilyn Samonte. When is the best time to do a breast self-examination? BSE. You were talking about this earlier, doctor. Yes, yes. So, uh, the best time is uh, wait for seven days from the first day of your menstrual period. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you do it before your menstrual period, uh, it's going to be painful. Your The lobules of your breast will be engorged and you will not be able to do an effective breast examination. So, wait for seven days. Seven you know. days. Okay. Right. Another question, thank you doctor, another question from Janeline Santa Cruz. If I'm not sure with my breast self-examination, should I undergo a mammography right away? Let's check this. So doc, if she's not sure about her um, examination, should she undergo a mammography right away? Not right away. I think uh, most important is First, uh, go to the doctor. Any doctor um, will be able to tell you how to do the self-breast examination. Go to the doctor and let the doctor uh, teach you how to do the um, self-breast exam. Actually, aside from the monthly self-breast exam, you have to do yearly, yearly visits with the doctor doing the breast exam mm -hmm. um, himself or herself. Okay. I don't know if we should... Uh, yes. I guess, uh, I guess we should... Fix this a bit and yeah. then just show Should them. Should I show them? Yes, please. So ideally, briefly. right, briefly, you do. You could do it lying down, or, but some um, women find it easier to do well in the shower when their hands are slippery. So the three uh, middle fingers on the breast, you should cover the whole part of the breast. So there are two techniques, okay? You can start from, you know, from the nipple, this is the nipple, the areola, uh, smaller circles, making bigger circles you should be really be able to palpate it like that all right you know okay, okay so that way so just uh, for the interest of time mm -hmm. you know cover the air but you really have to feel deep very deep okay feel for any masses okay pain uh, whatever so those are the five piece of breast examination we have um, yes position, so palpitation yeah. pressure perimeter and pattern yes so that's one um, style or pattern, but the other one is, you know, going in and out vertically. Make sure you cover, you know, with the same pressure, cover all parts of the breast. And not only the breast, I have to emphasize, it's also important to cover the axillary or armpit area because okay. this is where the lymph nodes are. This, this is where the lymph nodes that are draining the breast are and it's very important for you to feel that on both breasts. Mm -hmm. And underneath the clavicle and over, there are lymph nodes here that you need to palpate. Okay. Also the center of the chest. Mm -hmm. So you do that, you know, um, left breast palpate with your right uh, three middle fingers and of course the right breast you do it with your uh, left three middle fingers. Okay. Well, thank you for that doctor because others might think that this is the only area that they have to cover right. but they have yes. to go up and they have to go under That's as important. well. And to add, no, yes. the more often you do it, the more you are familiar with <laughs> what the normal feels like. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly if you feel something that you never felt before, 
that's when you try and see the doctor now. Yes. That's the whole purpose. So the, the more often you do it, you're used to it, you know how it feels, this is normal, this is normal, then one day you feel something. I usually tell my patients what you're looking for, something that feels like a marble, okay. something it's hard. hard yeah. already. Uh -huh. Okay. So yeah. let's not wait for for, <laughs> yeah. for that exactly. that marble to come yeah. out. You know, we should uh, always be mindful. It's our body. We should take care of it. We should understand it and know if there's something amiss. Right. A Twitter question from Gliza Nike. How often should I get a pap test? Well, yeah, we answered that a while we ago. Answered no? it we a while used ago. to. Most of us still do it annually. Mm -mm. We, that's how we got used to. That's our training. But the most re recent recommendation is to to do it every three years. And when do you start? 21 years of age. Okay. Every three years. All right. How about the pelvic uh, exam? The pelvic examination, yes. yeah. Well, the pap smear is to help us detect cervical cancer. Okay, the pelvic exam will help us detect any masses in the ovaries or in the uterus. Mm -hmm. So it's recommended to have your gynecologic uh, oncologist or your gynecolo gynecologist Examine you once a year. Okay, I once asked, a year. Yeah. I ask that because we do our breast examination. We have a pap smear, and in that area, the same, yeah. the pelvis also. Because th that area is kind of quite yes. difficult for you to do your own examination, yes, exactly, right? So yes. you really need your OBGYN to to help you with that. Mm -hmm. You should see him or her once a year. Mm -hmm. And they say during exams like this, um, radiation comes into play. Uh, is it a factor in in? Um, uh, bringing about uh, certain cancers also when one undergoes uh, like an x-ray an or a, yeah. a mammogram? No, no, those are low-dose radiation. Um, there is a risk for high-dose radiation. If they've had like as a child treatment for lymphoma mm -hmm. with high-dose radiation or, you know, survivors of a uh, nuclear bomb, um, mm -hmm. accidental okay. exposure. But that from the routine mammogram or chest x-ray tests, mm -hmm. you know, you don't really get uh, breast cancer from that low dose mm -hmm. of radiation. Just curious, do men also get breast cancer? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, I, I just mm -hmm. thought about it because rarely, not, rarely. But yeah. uh, I'm, t I'm asking that also because um, the Philippines is the number one in Asia for breast cancer. Why is this so? I, I think it's, um, it could be both, um, you know, good or bad. Either uh, people are get, going to their doctors and having themselves um, examined or subjected to screening tests, such that's why these breast cancer are diagnosed. Um, also, as our, but the bad side is maybe our, there are risk factors like our lifestyle because of, you mentioned obesity. Yes. Obesity is also a risk factor for uh, breast cancer because mm -hmm. um, the fat cells can convert into the estrogen, the hormone that um, is a nutrient for the, the cancer cells. Um, other is, you know, alcoholism. Smoking? Does smoking contribute to breast cancer? For a lot of cancers. Yes. Um, in general. Uh, in general. Cancers, okay. Always, yeah. It's smoking an enemy, factor, of, yeah. Yes, enemy yes. of the doctor, really, is you know, smoking. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really do anything good, mm -hmm. but except causes cancer, a lot of diseases. Um, late menopause, um, early menarche, and late uh, age of first pregnancy. So, as um, Women are more into their careers. Um, you know, um, having a family is pushed later on. So this is part of the lifestyle, like um, having your first pregnancy, mm -hmm. uh, full term completed pregnancy at uh, 30 and above is considered a risk factor. Okay, we talk about risk factors about women um, 30 and above for ovarian cancer. Is that a risk factor for women 30 and above or those mm. who have? Um, um unexplained infertility maybe or those who are s we're talking single. about age and yes. ovarian cancer no? um, majority of cases are seen at the age of 50 to 60 mm -hmm. so premenopausal and menopausal mm -hmm. but that there are also certain ovarian cancers that have a predilection for younger, the younger ones. yeah mm -hmm. adolescents um, when you talk of ovarian cancer, it's a variety of okay. types, no? Mm -mm. And then uh, there are those that are commonly really seen in uh, in children and in adolescents. Mm -hmm. Most parent are the most common are seen really in uh, older women. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, why? Uh, yes. It's difficult to answer. Okay. Even that question, we, we still do not. Uh, but we know it does happen. We know we know the numbers. We know the incidences. That are, what really causes it? Still, still don't know why. Don't know, yeah. mm -hmm. but I know why our viewers tune into Med Talk because they want to ask questions from our doctors. A Twitter question from April Joy Tolentino. What screening tests are available for uterine cancer? Okay. Dr. Famador. For uterine cancer and ovarian cancer, we still do not have any screening no tests. Best, yeah. Only cervical cancer. Okay. In fact, cervical cancer is a prototype of a cancer that has a very effective screening test. As I said a while ago, it mm -hmm. can detect the pre-malignant phase. No? Yes. In, in breast, for example, we have the mammography as a screening test. Yes. But at best, it can detect it early. Mm -hmm. It's already cancer, but early detection. For cervical cancer, we have the pap smear, which can detect it even before it's cancer. For uterine, we don't have a test yet. The best is symptomatic. See your doctor right away once you have any abnormal bleeding. Okay. Yeah. So it has to be investigated. Mm -hmm. For ovarian, again, it's also symptoms. Or in any symptoms that are bothering you in the pelvic area, mm -hmm. bloatedness, enlargement, you feel a mass, immediately see your OBGYN. Okay, so you're the, you can be the doctor for, for yourself in, in that particular case. <laughs> I mean, just, just to monitor yeah. what's going on inside your body right. and then yeah. you know, get in touch with yeah. your particular doctor. Because as you said, there are no screening tests set yeah. for that. Maybe in the future, they will come yeah, up we're, with we're, something. For, for example, for ovarian, we've been looking into the combination of ultrasound yes. and a tumor marker test, a blood test. No? Mm -hmm. um, it had much potential, but the studies have shown that they're not that effective or cost effective. No? Okay. So, so far, wala pa. Wala pa, okay. <laughs> but so far, we've discussed uh, about breast cancer. We've talked about um, the exam. We've talked about, um, you know, the possible factors, lifestyle, um, environment. Now, let's talk about when one is detected or when, when one has been detected with breast cancer, there are choices. And depending on the stage, I understand there's a lumpectomy and a mastectomy. Please tell us the difference between the two. Okay, for um, early stage breast cancer that can be taken out with surgery, you have um, two choices, uh, modified radical mastectomy or lumpectomy with radiation. Uh, so uh, most of my patients actually offer the modified radical mastectomy wherein they take out the whole breast, uh, including the uh, lymph node tissues. When on my breast exam, I pointed to you out the lymph nodes where the breast drains. So they take that out too. Um, for the lumpectomy with radiation, that is actually called breast conservation uh, surgery when they okay. want to maintain their, uh, much of their breast. So it's just a partial breast resection. They take out part of the breast with surrounding normal tissue but they have to undergo radiation after that if they do just lumpectomy, if they don't have a mastectomy, which is the whole breast. Mm -hmm. um, for those who are really um, interested in maintaining you know, a good aesthetic, you know, uh, a good breast yes. um, asymmetry, what they do is actually with the mastectomy, you can do immediate reconstruction on the same Surgery, and we can do that now. We, um, a lot of patients starting to uh, choose that here, even in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So they will not be, um, you know, depressed when they see um, their breast their gone. Appearance. You know, yes. it's very, that's very important in the healing of the patients is they like what they see after, mm -hmm. you know, that's part of the healing after uh, breast surgery. That's for the early. As we go on on late stages, that is when you will need the systemic treatments, chemotherapy. Uh, there are oral treatments also, uh, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and um, hormonal, hormonal therapy. Mm -hmm. So these are uh, several um, armaments as doctors we have in the fight um, for breast cancer. And they are quite effective. I am for fortunate to, um, you know, tell you that they are really quite good, um, mm -hmm. especially now if, uh, if uh, patients come to us and seek this treatment. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the healing process, not only physically, but also emotionally. It is important. For, for the patient, right. it is very important. And yes. it is important that we have knowledge about these different types of cancers that affect women, uh, the signs and symptoms. Again, early detection is, is always key. Mm -hmm. Any parting words, last message or tips to our viewers? Maybe 
what we want to impress upon our viewers. There's this, there's this fear talaga of cancer. Yes. No? So sometimes they will not go to the doctor just out of fear or seek treatment. No? Well, what we have to tell them is that, one, it can be prevented. Some cancers really can be prevented. The one is cervical cancer. Now, if they are diagnosed, they can be treated. No, cancer is a disease, it's really nakakatakot, no, but it can be cured, as Doctora said. So once they you know they know it can be cured, we have the way to treat it. I mean, that would encourage them to come and, and do it. The, the delay is what is sometimes the problem. Eh? Mm -hmm. They know there's something wrong, or the doctors told them you have this problem, it has to be treated this way, but they tend to, you know, delay, delay up just out of fear, no? Because they're afraid of chemotherapy, mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. But, you know, kaya. It can be treated. You can go through it. You just have to do it, and you'll turn out okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Dr. Flamador. Yes, that's Dr. right. Fajardo. Yes, so early detection is key, and always take care of your health. Because if you are diagnosed with cancer, and you are healthy, Yes, I mean, uh, good weight, good lifestyle, eating habits, no smoking, um, moderate to minor alcohol consumption. If you are unfortunately diagnosed with cancer, you can beat this disease um, with the help of the doctor. And it's always important that uh, when patients are diagnosed with cancer, um, that's why I say about the overall emotional, you know, um, support. It's very important, you know, um, ask people for help when you're diagnosed with this, ask okay. a lot of questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, doctors. Thank you, Thank you so much, Dr. Jay Famador and Dr. Therese Narcisa Fajardo for helping us understand tonight's topic. See you again next Tuesday on MedDoc as we talk about the reproductive infections that women usually get. 10 p.m. on your scheduled on-air consultation here on the Solar News Channel. This is Angel Jacob. Thank you and good night.